Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KipAdger.com. Out here today to share a little adventure on a attempt to summit Hoodoo Mountain. I said attempt, so already you know, probably wasn't successful. But this adventure started like many adventures. Got a text message from my good buddy, Bill Rapier from Amtac Shooting. And he said, hey, what are you doing Monday? Do you want to go skiing? I was like, okay, sure. So he said, be here at this time, make sure you pack light and bring this, this, this. Gonna probably be moving pretty quick. So in my head, I'm like, hmm, pack light. Cause usually it's like, hey, bring carbine, this, this, this. Cause usually if nothing else, it's a training evolution with respect to just being able to carry gear, things along those lines. So when he says pack light, because we're going to try and move quick, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a good one. And sure enough, it was. So headed up there, met up with Bill, and got to it. Walked a little ways until the snow was thick enough to where we could uh, go ahead and throw our skis on. We already had our skins on, so clipped in and started moving. Largely, it was a whole lot of up, continuing to move higher and higher, further up the mountains. Eventually we got to his range property and why not do a little bit of shooting since we were already there, since extra ammo was on the gear list. So we had at it, shooting a few targets from skis. You know, truly cold bore, cold bore shot. Shoot the big one. There you go. Rolling.
for the most part, it was pretty easy going. Where we could, we'd basically stick to logging roads, sometimes have to basically cut up through trees, which would slow things down. But overall, I think we were probably making pretty good time. Just kept grinding out the miles, grinding out the hours, heading I up. I will say energy levels, they were actually pretty stable. This, keep in mind, I, I don't know, probably about 10, 12 days into my carnivore experience so far. So I had eaten the night before, had woken up, just had a couple glasses of water with some salt and had rolled out. So hadn't eaten anything. Uh, occasionally Bill would uh, have a little snack, some of the uh, almond butter, something like that. Rest. And for my lunch, I pretty much just brought some, uh, I don't know, probably like 12 ounces of pork belly that I had uh, cooked up the night before. But hadn't broken into that yet. So continued cruising on up, again, grinding those miles out. At this point, definitely well past noon, having started probably around 8.30 in the morning. At a certain point, it makes a lot of sense to stop and take care of your feet before it becomes a real problem. So that's exactly what we both did. Move on your feet, gotta take care of them. Super important. Finally, we are both probably getting a little worn down and we were also getting hungry. I was getting hungry anyway. So we stopped in part because we were hungry and wanted to have food. And then also Bill, as far as water goes, I think he only brought one, probably sub one liter container because he also brought a stove to basically melt snow for water. So we ended up stopping. I think at this point, probably about three in the afternoon. And Bill got busy cooking a pretty amazing meal. Granted, not carnivore, but it looked pretty good. Pepper Jack, of course. Nice. Oh, sharp cheddar is good too. jacket one more minute and then we add Trader Joe's Fritos and we're in for a delicious meal thank you Andrew Skirka last step we have to add the Trader Joe's basically a Frito the spicy version is better this is a normal one you add it into your rice and beans now you have a delicious meal after lunch at this point i want to say it's probably about 3 30 in the afternoon we looked at it and we're like okay what do we want to do probably have at least another hour to the summit of Hoodoo Mountain. Do we want to do that or do we want to turn around now? And where we landed was, let's turn around now. 
as it stood, we were already probably going to be coming home in the dark. And yeah, it was a long day up to that point. And both decided, you know what, like, we'll get it another day. So we turned around, ripped skins, and started heading back down the mountain. Just before you got out of view. Just Eventually, we lost the light, and it's time to illuminate things with headlamps, or for that matter, whatever flashlight you happen to have on you. We finally made it back down off the mountain, probably about like 6.30 that night. Having been gone for, I think, a total of over nine hours, and as far as movement goes, like over six and a half hours of movement. So all said and done, we did not summit Hoodoo Mountain, but we did cover over 20 miles, which is kind of funny because initially before we set off, it was like, yeah, probably end up, probably end up getting about 30 kilometers. In my head, I'm like, no, nope, not me. Like, I don't think I'm signing up for that, but yeah, actually I did sign up for that. I forget, it was like a little over 30 kilometers. Like I said, just over 20 miles, all said and done, up and back down. Anytime you set out on adventures, depending on the scale of them, can definitely give you opportunities to grow personally, but it also gives you a chance to kind of shake out gear and kind of see what works for you in different circumstances. So I was running this set of AT, Alpine Touring by Solomon and with these skins. I will say they did a great job for me. The one thing, it was interesting. So Bill had a setup that was like literally a super ultralight Alpine Touring setup. And with it, kind of in the middle of the ski, like underfoot, there are some scales. And it was interesting seeing when we were going downhill and I'd rip skins, how much more glide I got with mine that did not have those. But at the same time, as soon as we started getting into an incline, it either became all work, me trying to push myself up with my poles, which I will say, these baskets did not help. I need to get like larger baskets for these skis. But no, like I, once it got to a slope without skins, really difficult to get up. In some of those places, it's like, well, I don't want to put skins back on just to pull them back off like 20 minutes later. So it's kind of a give take trying to figure out what worked. But overall, things did a rad job. As far as this helmet, I wore it in part because 
lots of times on adventures with Bill, like falling has consequences, especially going through trees and stuff like that. And the other thing that's actually really nice about this is it's warm, like it's insulated. I kept the vents open pretty much all day long. Even still, I was definitely sweating some depending on what we were doing, exertion levels and stuff like that. But it was actually really handy and honestly helped just keep me warm in addition to protect me from unseen things, especially coming down in the dark, smashing through branches, trees, things along like that. Well, not trees, but tree branches. It's always interesting to, to try and figure out what's ideal and what works with respect to regulating temperature for your body during exertion, especially when it's really cold out because we are up there is in the 20s. And so as soon as you stop, depending on what you're doing, if you stop for too long, your core drops. So you had to immediately kind of like mechanically insulate or regulate however you're gonna do it. So that you basically keep your body temperature in an ideal range. Otherwise you end up getting really cold really fast. So to that end, I actually started out with this. It's a basically lightweight merino layer and it's kind of like I have used it as a base layer. It's a little thicker than most base layers. So I had it on over my base layer and once we started moving, I pulled it off. And for most of the time when we were active, I left it off, which brings me to what I was actually wearing, which is this right here. This is nice, lightweight, merino base layer. It's actually made by Tactical Distributors. They have a whole line. It's their MTHD, which stands for Mountain Tundra H2O Desert. Basically a whole line of kind of technical clothing. And I have the bottoms to this. I was not wearing the bottoms, but I was wearing the shirt. Actually did a really good job. This coupled with the helmet kept me warm for most of it and also it wicks moisture so even if it does end up getting wet whether you're brushing into branches getting snow on it still fine and then underneath that I had again same by tactical distributors basically merino underwear moisture wicking and then a pair of these by fits merino wool basically knee-high socks which is in part why i wasn't wearing the like long john pants base layer as well these were knee-high and then as far as pants go i was wearing these these are probably my favorite like outdoor adventure pants these are i've reviewed them before these are the prometheus design works uh ranger field pants and on the one hand, like best pocket layout that I've found for the stuff I do, really like the pocket layout, but also it's made out of the stretch, basically kind of like soft shell material. And so it'll shed snow and water. And because there is stretch also, once I pull them up, get my ski boots on, can basically pull this down over the boots and keep snow from coming in the boots as well. As far as my pack, I ended up using this right here, which is my Tarahamura pack by Hill People Gear. It carries really well. Kind of an interesting, like definitely a unique design as far as the shoulder straps and stuff. I reviewed this a while back as well. Before we set off, I want to say this weighed about 15 pounds. A fair bit of that was water. I had two liters, one of which was in this, this insulated water bottle, the other was in a regular Nalgene bottle. I will say by the end of it, the water in my Nalgene bottle will start freezing and eventually the last little bit froze, whereas this, it was good to go. Two liters probably wasn't quite sufficient for what we were doing and I could have melted water at some point because as I mentioned, Bill had a stove but I didn't and both these water bottles got me through. Coming down in the dark, I didn't have a headlamp, even though I knew it was a possibility. 
and I ended up actually just bringing this, which is my Stiletto Pro by Surefire. And while coming down, I can find my helmet. What I ended up actually doing is putting this thing, I guess, in like that on this chin strap where it's coming down and had it on the lowest setting, which is five lumens, which was plenty. And basically you can't, this is made so you can put it on like the bill of a hat and then you have a headlamp, but I didn't have a hat, I had this. And so I ended up actually putting it on there, did a pretty good job illuminating everything. There was quite a bit of a loom. The moon was pretty full and there's snow everywhere. Like you could see shadows, but it's one of those where, yeah, you can see shadows, but maybe you're not gonna see the branch that's about to smash you in the face. Kept it on five lumens. Generally, that was plenty. There were a couple points where we're gonna bomb down some hills on the way back in the dark. So I cranked it up to the medium setting. I think it's around 250 lumens or something just so I could see further because things were coming faster, but no, got me down the mountain. As far as other stuff I had in my pack, um, I don't know, a handful of kind of things I should have, things go wrong, radio, different things like that. And then also this jacket, which I believe I may have reviewed before by Outdoor Research. Down jacket, waterproof, compressible, and this beanie too. Never wore the beanie. Jacket I definitely did wear, not until we got to that halfway point. We were gonna stop for lunch, pulled it out, threw it on, threw on that other piece too, the uh, merino outer layer, and yeah, zipped everything up, tried to stay warm. Also a pair of gloves, things along those lines, but pretty much the loadout and kind of my experience with this gear. Lastly, with respect to gear, this stuff, pretty clutch. My good buddy Matt from Jerking the Trigger, he actually gave this to me, took it out there. It was incredibly handy. We stopped at one point to tape our feet up and a second point, Bill had some more hot spots, stopped and he taped those up as well. No issues. It's one of those where if you stay on top of it, as far as, hey, I feel a hot spot, no, like it does a great job. Really impressed with how well this stuff does, keeping you from getting blisters as long as you're in front of the power curve. All said and done, that was a pretty, pretty rad adventure. Pretty much all day on skis, just over 20 miles up and down. Over, I think over 3,000, 3,500 feet vertical gain. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. When we got back, I was like, Bill, this would have killed a lesser man. He said, well, Ivan, that's why lesser men weren't invited. I was like, all right, fair point. It's pretty cool to, one, have friends that'll push you. Would I have gone out to go on like a 20 mile cross country ski adventure? Probably not. I would have gone X amount of miles, been like, oh, here's a cool spot, I'm gonna stop and film or do this or that. But no, it's pretty fun sometimes to just set a goal and be like, hey, what we wanna do is go do this. We wanna go get to the top of Hoodoo Mountain. And sometimes you get there and sometimes you don't, but it's an adventure either way. And being able to be physically capable to undertake that and also have friends that are capable and we'll go out on adventures and push you. I think that's definitely a good thing. Definitely grateful for this adventure, but yeah, awesome time all around. Lastly, if you appreciate my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it, whether it's liking and sharing videos or going over to kitbatcher.com, picking up KBAT target pads, stickers, things along those lines, or if you want to support me directly through Patreon, Greatly appreciate that as well. Over there on Patreon, we also have a Discord set up. So if you have any questions for me, I'm more than happy to answer them. Probably not gonna be down in the YouTube comments, but I'm over there on Discord. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. the end of this we're gonna be sponsored by those guys
the almond butter.